Broderick, or Roderick Castleberry. Yes, it is. Broderick Castleberry falling on the Shannon King fumble. And the Tigers get a turnover here on the 27-yard line out of the Panthers where they'll take over first and 10. And we'll look to put this one out of reach early in the fourth quarter of play. Sarah Catherine, is it Sarah Catherine? She's bringing the Tigers good luck already. I tell you, Phil, I love these little girls. She is a doll. I think I'll take her home. I don't know if her daddy will give her up, though. Chris Elder's on for the Tigers, looking to extend their 16 to nothing lead here in Murphy Stadium. There's the give to Jimmy Williams up the middle. He bounces outside. Refuses to go down, finally is brought down by Eric Mims of the Panthers. Gain was good for one yard. Second down and nine for the Tigers. <laughs> Saw Julie Abel as well as David's other, or David's son Crosby Abel in the crowd tonight. Whole Abel family out for the Tigers. That's what you like to see, Phil. Uh, the alumni coming back and supporting the school, and there's a lot of them out here. There's Jimmy Williams around left tackle, putting his head down and pulling over every Panther on the field. Down to the three-yard line is Williams. Finally brought down by Bubba Pinson of the Panthers, but not until Williams gets a Tiger first down, first and goal for the Tigers on a vicious run by Jimmy Williams. Boy, Jimmy Williams playing pinball with Bubba Pinson that time, trying to run right through him to get to the end zone, and he almost does, Phil. Elders looking over for the call, and they will probably get pretty conservative here. They've got the Hosses to score and check that call there on the nine-yard line, or maybe the ten-yard line, not the three-yard line. First and goal, nonetheless, for the Tigers with... Williams and Simpson in the split backfield. The give is to Williams up the middle. He puts his head down is good for four yards. Second down and goal from the six yard line. And Phil David uh, Abel with us in the booth was a power runner in his own right. David, have you seen anyone in high school football run any harder than this runner, Jimmy Williams? No, this Jimmy Williams is fantastic. I hear this Davis fellow from Homewood High School is supposed to be real good. So if Gaz and I gets to meet Homewood, it should be quite a matchup these two running backs. We talked about that earlier tonight. They, it should be a showcase of outstanding runners here in the state 5A playoffs, and we just hope that they get to that point. It looks like that they will, and there's a touchdown, Tigers. Jimmy Williams right up the middle. Here it is again, Phil. The reverse to Jimmy Williams. Instead of taking it outside this time, he pulls ahead and says, let's take it straight in. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Jimmy Williams exemplifying that right there, Phil. Good run by Jimmy Williams. There's the engineer, Mark Marston. Can't keep those physics laws out of football. Why not? There's John Giles on for the point after attempt. High snap, but it is put down nicely. And it is good with 10.08 left to go in the fourth and final period. The score is 23 to nothing in favor of the Gas Knot Tigers. We'll be back in a moment with the Comcast Game of the Week. It falls to the turf, is picked up by Pat Harris. He runs around right in, but is hemmed in finally by the Tigers at the 20 yard line. First time in a century and a half that the Panthers have made it to the 20 yard line on a kickoff. Tigers brought in John Giles in for that high pooch kick, trying to catch the Panthers off guard, and they were once again able to stop the Tiger, or the, rather the uh, Panthers, before a big game on the run back. 23 to nothing here. The Gadsden Tigers are poised here to move on in the state championship series. They will take on the winner of the Pell City McAdory High School Mac up the McAdory Yellow Jackets. There's the snap to King, and he gives to his tailback, who is out for four yards. That's Robbie Brooks. First time we've seen Robbie run the ball tonight. He's out for four yards, bringing up a second and seven for the Panthers with 9.24 left. Clock continues to run, and the Tigers can pretty much cruise from here on out, I would think, Mark. You know, Phil, we brag a lot about the offensive stars that Gaston has on that side of the ball. But the defense has really shown tonight that it's been the strong point of this team 
all year. They held Walter Welburn until the offense could get his motor going tonight. That defense is quite a luxury for any offense, and boy, they've got outstanding play on both sides of the ball, certainly deserving of their undefeated record. The Panthers are going to try to pass from now on, and the Shannon King has a room up the middle. He cuts left. Maudsley grabs him at the 45-yard line and throws him down after a good run by Shannon King and, and also a good tackle by Jeff Maudsley. King is good for about 15 to 18 good yards, though, and a Panther first down with 8.44 left to go. They'll have a first and 10. And Phil King is the only runner on the Walter Welburn offense with positive yardage. In the first half, number eight, Pat Harris, had minus 13, and he lost eight yards in his first run of the second half. I'd like to thank Anise Morrison, along with Catherine Collins, for providing us with tonight's refreshments. Another terrific job by the team Morrison and Collins. There is Shannon King at right tackle. He's nailed there by Roderick Thomas of the Tigers after a two-yard gain, second down and eight for the Panthers. Scott Hutchison, our producer tonight, again doing a wonderful job with the production crew taking a bow here in the booth. Scott, why don't you ever get on camera over there? That's what I don't understand. The Notre Dame box, uh, yet again, is going to come up short here against this terrific Gadsden high defense. But you can't blame it on the Tigers. There's an illegal procedure on the Panthers. They'll be stepped off five-yard penalty, bringing up a second down and 13 for the Panthers. 7.38 here left to go in the fourth quarter of play in tonight's first round playoff game. There's an official timeout, so let's take a quick timeout here on the Comcast Game of the Week. There's motion by Pat Harris of the Panthers in what will be the Panthers' last game of the year. The give is to the tailback, ridden down hard is Pat Harris. Stop was made by Marcellus Mostella of the Tigers. There is another flag down on the play. Let's see what the call is. The call on the play prior to that was illegal procedure. That was the five-yard call against the Panthers. Let's see what this one's going to be. Looks like it's going to be also against the Panthers. Holding is the call against the Panthers. It will be declined by the Tigers, bringing up a third and 14 to go for the first down. There's a snap to Shannon King, set to pass. He's nailed in the backfield. Roderick Thomas right up the middle, nails Shannon King for a big loss, fourth down, and a millennium for a first down left for the Panthers. And Roderick takes the lead in the Goodies Headache Lick of the Night. A big lick that time, Phil. That was a big one. There's a good shot of the Gadsden Hot Cheerleaders, and they are sensing a victory here like sharks around blood. These Tigers are going to put another one away here in the first round of the 1991 high school 5A playoffs. Deservedly so. The Panthers are going to punt here. They know that this one's over. There's the block that you saw, Mark Morrison. Andy Swafford falls on it. Touchdown. Go, oh, Kenny. Touchdown, Tigers. Back to live action. It was a safety on the play. I thought that the official raised his hands, touchdown, but he did say safety, knocked out of the end of the end zone. But I'm sure the Tigers will take it, two points, plus they'll get the ball back with 547 left to go. There's little hope for these Panthers left anymore, Mark. Well, Phil, you're right. The official, the head referee, Larry Smith, originally signaled touchdown. I think he was shielded from the play and then actually looked a second time after he had signaled touchdown and realized that Shane was lying out of the back of the end zone. So he changed the call to the safety. And probably the 
the correct call, Phil. At this point, it's immaterial. The Tigers are going to move on in the playoffs, Phil, and everyone's excited about next week's matchup and the possible matchup in two weeks. I'll tell you, Mark, the, uh, whether Andy Swafford fell on that ball or not, he still gets my my Coca-Cola MVP, Comcast Cable MVP for this week. And I'll make it unanimous. I'll cast my vote in the same way again, coming up with the honors for the game tonight, Phil. Andy, of course, last week, as you mentioned, came up with the defensive honors. There's Broderick Castleberry taking in the squib kick that we had pointed out that the Panthers might try earlier at the 37-yard line Castleberry had thrown down. Nice job of receiving by Castleberry. Looked the ball in and then attained some yardage after the play was taken in. The ball was teed up in front of the tee there in an attempt to make the hard kick and bounce off one of the Tiger receiving team. But Castleberry looked it in nicely and acquires excellent field position here for the Tigers, which they've appreciated and been able to have most of the night. There's the pitch to Shane Simpson following the block of Ted Mitchell. There's a flag down on the play. Simpson gets one yard on the play, but it's thrown deep in the backfield, and it's going to be holding against these Tigers. Ted Mitchell coming into the game at fullback that time for the Tigers, number 27, coming off an excellent second half against the Emma Rebels last week. A terrific display of athleticism by Ted Mitchell, and he is coming in for, <laughs> for some more action tonight in the 1991 playoffs. First and very long, first and 25 for the Tigers after a 15-yard holding penalty. Phil, we called him Greg, Greg Cruz all week last week. Uh, that's because the program has him as such, and it reminds me of a story that I'll get to right after the play. Elder's still in at quarterback for the Tigers. There's Mitchell at fullback, and Shane Simpson takes off at tailback. Cuts outside, back inside again, and is ridden down after a gain of seven yards. He's down to the 42-yard line of the Panthers, but the Tigers will still have second and very long, about 13 yards for a first down. Getting back to our mistake in calling Ted Greg Cruz last week uh, when I was in high school, Coach Ken Mama, now coaching the junior high school team, had left his uniform on a road trip and borrowed his good friend David Curl's jersey and probably had the game of his life. And David Curl's parents were mighty proud because their son's name was called out on the loudspeaker all week that week. Well, Ted Mitchell certainly had the game of the season for him last week. He had a terrific one, and we apologize for the mix-up. Chris Elder's going to throw a pass out to Stan Roberts. He catches it at the 34-yard line. It's tackled immediately. But they're still going to need about eight yards for a Tiger first down, third and eight for the Tigers. But more importantly, the clock continues to run with 3.53 left to go in this exciting state championship playoff game. I tell you, Roberts impresses me too, Phil. A senior with great hands. He also had a great game last week with a couple of real key catches. We hope that you'll watch next week's broadcast. We are going to cover the Gadsden High Pel uh, more, than like, more than likely Pell City game. That is a Thursday night game if you're coming out to Murphy Stadium, and we will have it here on Comcast Cable. There's the fake give to Shane Simpson. Elder's going to roll right and try to find a man. He's got Roberts open, but chooses to run for the first down himself. First down yardage for Chris Elders. Staying inbounds and allowing the clock to continue to run with 3.14 left to go in this game. Pell City is the favorite in that game against McAdory. Mark, the uh, McAdory Yellow Jackets really don't have a whole lot this year. Uh, and they did make it to the playoffs, but Pell City, a much stronger team, and they are favored to meet these, meet these Gas and High Tigers. Let's take a break here on the Comcast Game of the Week with 3.14 left to go in the game. We'll be right back in a moment. You can see some of the starters on offense for the Tigers that have already taken their shoulder pads off. There's number 34, Jimmy Williams, among others. And the Tigers have put the non-starters into the game where they'll finish this one out. Jimmy Williams, number 34, as you just saw, breaks the 100-yard barrier once again. No real big runs tonight, but he gets 101 yards on 13 carries and yet another outstanding night for Jimmy Williams. 
There's the give to Ted Mitchell. Cuts it inside around left end. He's down to the 21-yard line. Second and six for the Tigers with 3.03 left to go. There's our man again, Phil. Ted, don't forget my name, Mitchell. <laughs> Coach DeLorenzo has to be sensing a victory here. He coaches for the full, what would that be, 48 minutes? <laughs> Break out your calculator, Phil. I need it. 48 minutes of play, and there you see a the tonight's referee. Second down and eight for the Tigers. Coach Vince DeLorenzo enjoying an outstanding season. More than likely taking on the Pell City team. And we'll have it right here on Comcast Cable, same time and channel next week. Bo Dill gives to his tailback. That is Jonathan Gentry. Jonathan is ahead for two yards. Third down and six for the Tigers. Bo Dill, the junior quarterback, in to finish this one out with 2.28 left to go in the game. And at this point, the Panthers would like to just get this one over with, get on the bus, and head back to Walter Welber. A valiant effort. They were just up against too much tonight, though. The Tigers coming into this game with an excellent game plan. Didn't change a successful game plan very much from last week, and it paid off for them. So we'll look forward to seeing what these Tigers can come up with as they move along in the state playoffs. The competition just gets harder and harder from now on with 151 left to go in this game. It's good to see Greg Roberts in the crowd tonight, along with his lovely wife. Another great crowd on hand here for the Gadsden High School, and I'm sure that will continue throughout the playoffs. Coach Clay leaving the booth to go down to join his team in the celebration on the field, and he does such a great job in the booth for the Tigers, and Danny Kimball and Charles Nell on defense. Phil, it goes without saying, they have done an outstanding job this year. No question about it. This team is, is heavy with talent, but they're also heavy with talent in the coaching categories, too. Ted Mitchell there looking the likes of Derek Lassick running with reckless abandon and he has a couple more years left after this year Phil the Tigers are loaded with talent and uh, they won't lose a whole lot even looking to next year 108 left to go with a first and 10 for the Tigers or rather for the Panthers that is the Tigers trot on their defense some of the starters still on the field for the Tigers. I see Will Albright, Big Will, number 72, there on the defensive line. Also, Tommy Gargas still on the field for the Tigers. DJ Davis, among others. There's the snap to the tailback of the Panthers. He's ahead for three yards. That's Robbie Brooks of the Panthers with 35 seconds left. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us tonight. This is then Phil Collins, along with Mark Morrison here on the Comcast Game of the Week. We'll be here at the same time next week for the Gadsden High versus the winner of the Bell City McAdory Yellow Jacket game. And we'll be happy to bring that one to you. With 15 seconds left, we'll see one more play here for the Panthers, more than likely. And stay with us. We'll have an interview after the game, hopefully with Coach DeLorenzo. There's a long run, and it looks like the Panthers might score. That's Robbie Brooks being run down from behind, however, on a vicious tackle. What a tackle by Roger Thomas as the game ends. This one's over. The Tigers have won from Murphy Stadium. This is Phil Collins saying good night, everyone, from the booth. 25 to nothing in favor of the Tigers. We'll be back next week from Murphy Stadium. Excellent performance by you as well as all of these guests and high tigers. Thank you. <laughs> now, can you tell us uh, what 44 is Carlos Lawrence? Stan Roberts is number 29. You heard the coach talking about Stan as the holder and his importance in tonight's matchup. And of course, Chris Elder is number 14. There's the four primary captains for the Tigers. And let's watch and see who will win this one and the way this one will unfold early. 
on a saturated field here tonight. Sparse crowd as expected because it has been raining for about 24 straight hours. There's the coin toss. Second round playoff opponent here in the 5A playoff. Got a good week of football here on the Comcast game of the week. I should say games of the week because tomorrow night we will be at along with Andy Swafford and Shane Simpson. There are your receivers for the Tigers. Uncharacteristically, Jimmy Williams deep in for the kickoff reception. Preparing to kick off for the Panthers is Gerald Posey, who also doubles as the quarterback for the Panthers. Gerald is only a sophomore. He started every game for the Panthers at quarterback in this wishbone team. So we're ready. Gerald puts the boot to it. It's going to go over the head of Shane Simpson, bounce into the end zone where you'll see a touchback. And the Tigers will take over first and 10 from the 20-yard line where they will start tonight's offensive series. <laughs> Senior Chris Elders trots over the field. As you can see, the sideline is soaking wet, as is the middle of the football field tonight. Tigers bring their offensive line to the ball. That's a, the lightest color. We'll see that ball all night, I imagine. Elders is going to give to Jimmy Williams right off the bat, and he's going to plow his way for three hard yards out to the 23-yard line. Stop made there by Matt Osborne of the Panthers. Second down and seven for the Tigers. Still, we pointed out uh, before the game the fact that uh, we thought it was important to keep a dry ball out there. It's uh, important to point out that's the same ball that they kicked into the end zone that rolled on through the end zone. It was never hardly even wiped off. I imagine the Tigers will learn as the night goes on that they need to get plenty of dry balls in there because that's just going to play a big part. There's Shane Simpson bursting up the middle and sliding for two or three yards after he earns a Gadsden high first down. First and 10 at the 32-yard line of the Tigers. He was one step away from breaking that one for big yardage, but the fullback, senior fullback was tripped up and was unable to get big yardage, but was able to get the first down yardage nonetheless. Phil, we may have to put a new statistic down on the paper, the longest slide of the night, that, the longest run. That was about a three yarder there, so you're doubling as the statistician tonight, so mark that one down, three yards after the run. Here's the elders to Jimmy Williams. He's got a hole, cuts back inside, and puts his head down, falls forward to the 40-yard line of the Tigers. Game was good for eight yards. Second down and two for the Tigers. Seeing the guest and going ahead and electing to go wide with the run twice now to Jimmy Williams, I thought we would see a lot of quick hits, hoping to get by those linemen before they could actually get any traction and see the ball. crowd continues to filter in here. The weather obviously has scared a few away. Hope we get a few more fans here tonight or they might block us out next week pending a sellout. There's Jimmy Williams. He's met immediately at the line of scrimmage. Will not be thrown down, but he will be stopped nonetheless by several Panther defenders, including Marcus Foreman leading the way there. Also, Adam Miller was in on the stop for the Panthers. Stan Roberts brings the play in, the third down and three play for Chris Elders and the Gadsden Tigers. Gadsden High School slowly but surely making their way through these 1991 playoff games and the 1991 season. Very quietly done. There's the first fumble of the night and the Panthers are going to fall on it. First and ten, the ball was fallen on by Jeremy Bowie of the Panthers and the Pell City Panthers will take over first and 10 on the first fumble of the night at the 36-yard line of the Tigers. Feels so important to make sure those handoffs tonight. That's going to be a big key. We said they might be able to throw the ball, but you can't throw the ball or run it until you hand it off. Big break for the Panthers. They bring their usual wishbone offense to the line, but they're going to run out of that double wing offense that you see out of the Gadsden Tigers a lot. The give is right up the middle play is good for three yards. 
second down and seven for the Panthers. Phil, you might pick it up on the camera that that is a different ball that is in the game now, a leather ball. Last year or a couple years ago, we were told that Gaston was playing Etowah in a rain-drenched game. Gaston elected not to go with a rubber ball, and uh, Etowah won the game, and after the game, they felt of both balls, and the leather ball felt about 15 pounds. They're going with the rubber ball tonight, it looks like, but Pell City staying with the leather ball. There's some of that experience that this Gaston hot team has. There's a good lick on the tailback. That's 33 Darren Edwards, the all-star for this Pell City team. He was met at the line hard, but could not be brought down until after he gained a couple more yards. The Panthers will have third and three from the 29-yard line of the Tigers, and this Tiger defense is pressed into service that they're not accustomed to having to be pressed into here early in tonight's first quarter. Again, running out of that one-back offense with the two wingbacks, there's motion. The give is up the middle, hurtling ahead for a first down. Once again is the tailback. That's Darren Edwards once again for the Panthers. Check that. That was uh, Todd Crow of the Panthers. The give was the number 22, Todd Crow, and he hurdles a Gadsden High lineman ahead for a Panther first down, down to the 24-yard line of the Tigers with eight minutes left to go in the first quarter of play. The Panthers are changing the offense slightly, the alignment, to conform to this wet playing surface here tonight. There's the give up the middle again. They're going to be content to run right up the middle, and if they can get two or three at a clip, why not? It looks like the ball came loose, but the ball was blown dead there. Again, the give was up the middle to the fullback. That's Todd Crow of the Panthers. Mark Marson and Phil Collins bringing you tonight's action from Murphy Stadium, a wet Murphy Stadium. It is not raining now, I don't think. It may be sprinkling slightly, but it's too little too late. The field is saturated. There's the first pass attempt of the night for Pell City. It's over the intended receiver's hands. Pass was intended by Tyrone Cohill. It falls to the wet turf. Incomplete third down and seven for the Panthers. Conversion down here for the Pell City team. Phil, when the ball's wet, the quarterback tends to tense up a little bit, think he's got to hold it a little tighter. We talked about the receivers knowing where they're supposed to go. The receiver actually had a couple steps then. If he'd have just lofted the ball to the space that was open on the field, he actually could have gone to the ball and caught it. Third down and seven, big play here for the Gadsden Tiger defense. The fake is to the fullback up the middle. He pitches to the tailback. He's out close to first down yardage. The ball is on the ground, but falling on by the runner of the Panthers. That was Darren Edwards around left end on a good option play run by this sophomore quarterback, Gerald Posey. Phil, I think he had the first down until he fumbled and the ball fell back on this side of the yardstick, so it looks like it's going to be fourth down for the Panthers. Unless they have a kicker of the caliber that Gadsden High has, they will probably go for this one, and they will. Well, Gadsden hasn't shown yet that they can stop them, Phil. They're going to say, show me. If you can stop me, here we go. Here goes the defense. We've seen it all year, Phil. Let's see if they can continue that trend. 6.25 left to go in the first quarter of play. Fourth and less than a yard for the Panthers. Let's see if we see a keeper here. And they draw the Tigers off sides. It's going to be first and 10 for the Panthers from inside the 10-yard line of the Tigers. They will have first and goal on the offside call. There you see it by the referee. First and goal for the Tigers inside the 10-yard line. We'll never know, Phil. They might have just been trying to draw them off sides, and if they haven't done it, they might have tried to elect for the field goal, but they were able to draw them off. I'm kind of surprised the defensive people did not point at the offense and try to uh, convince the officials that it wasn't them, that it was the offense. Gerald Posey, the quarterback, is the kicker, so they did have their kicker on the field. We will never know, though. First and goal from the nine-yard line for the Panthers. The pass across the middle is complete. Touchdown, Panthers! Randall Cannon of the Panthers takes in the Posey pass from the nine-yard line, and the Panthers have taken a six-to-nothing lead here on a stunned Gadsden Tiger defense. They're not accustomed to being scored on. Let's look at it again. On for